Hi, this is Eric White. This screencast is part six in a series of screencasts on getting started with OpenXML development. And in this screencast, I'm going to continue with discussing various developer techniques that you will likely need to use when you are doing OpenXML development. In part five, I discussed four major development techniques that you should be familiar with. There are six other techniques that I want to call out in this screencast on OpenXML developer techniques. The first is that of content controls and custom XML. There are a myriad of uses for content controls and custom XML. They are limited only by your imagination. I've used content controls for such things as delineation of code that needs to be tested. I've used it for data that is bound to XML that is related to data in a database. I've used it to delineate regions of text in a template for doing document generation. On OpenXML Developer, I recorded a fairly long screencast that walks through content controls and custom XML parts and explains what they're good for. The next tool that you should have in your toolbox is that of AltChunk. AltChunk is an approach by which you can import varieties of content in a variety of formats into an OpenXML word processing ML document. So for instance, you can import HTML, you can import another word processing document, you can import plain text, you can import MHT files, which are a single file format for HTML that includes all of the binary images and so on. Here is a blog post that tells you very specifically how to use AltChunk to do document assembly. Another resource that you should consider using when writing OpenXML code using .NET is the utility code in PowerTools for OpenXML. On OpenXMLDeveloper.org, I've recorded a screencast on the methods and classes in ptutil.cs in PowerTools for OpenXML. These are methods and classes that enable you to do functional programming more easily. In addition, I've recorded a screencast on the OpenXML specific utility methods and classes in PowerTools for OpenXML. If you are doing OpenXML development in .NET, you should be taking advantage of these classes and utility methods. Another important piece of functionality in PowerTools for OpenXML is that of Document Builder. Document Builder enables you to take pieces and parts of multiple OpenXML word processing ML documents and assemble them together into a single document. At OpenXMLDeveloper.org, if you scroll down to the bottom of the front page, you'll see this link to the wiki table of contents. If you click on that, you will find two resource centers. One resource center for Power Tools for OpenXML and another resource center just on Document Builder. I recommend that you go to those two links and view that content so that you can see how that functionality can be valuable to you in your development effort. Another fairly trivial technique, but nevertheless important, are the techniques around working with OpenXML documents in memory. Using these techniques, you can fabricate new OpenXML documents in memory, you can modify OpenXML documents in memory, you can take a template document and copy it and then modify it and then save it. Here you can find an MSDN article that talks through the various issues around working with in-memory OpenXML documents. On OpenXMLDeveloper.org, I've recorded a screencast that shows the simplest way 
that you can use OpenXML in an ASP.NET application. And this example uses those approaches for working with OpenXML documents in memory. When you're building an ASP.NET application, you don't want to have some requirement where you save OpenXML documents to the disk before you can work with them. And if you are fabricating a document for the end user to download, you really don't need to be saving that document to the disk. You can just assemble the document in memory and then make it available to the end user to download it. And last but not least, an important tool for working with OpenXML documents is Word Automation Services. Word Automation Services is a feature of SharePoint 2010 that enable you to transform OpenXML documents in very specific ways. You can convert an OpenXML document from any one of a number of supported formats to another format. So for instance, you can convert from Word 2003 to OpenXML, or you can convert from OpenXML to XPS or to PDF. There are a lot of scenarios where you want to transform an OpenXML document to a document of a different format. In addition, Word Automation Services enables you to populate fields. Fields in word processing documents are very special things that enable dynamic content in a word processing document. That dynamic content could be a little bit tricky to calculate by yourself, so Word Automation Services can help with doing that. For more detail on Word Automation Services, you can see this article on MSDN. That's all I'm going to cover in this video on developer techniques for OpenXML. It's pretty much been a whirlwind tour. We've covered an awful lot of information. It's important to select the right approach for your particular scenario and based on your particular development team for OpenXML. If you have XSLT experts on staff, then you certainly will want to use the approach of transforming an OpenXML document to flat OPC and then doing the transform using XSLT and then transforming back to an OpenXML document as appropriate. You may find it more convenient for your particular group of developers just to use document modification techniques. That's an approach that many developers can get their head around pretty easily. If you have very advanced transformation scenarios, then you very well may want to use the recursive functional transforms approach that I discussed in this video. Make sure that you come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're putting up there. In addition, you may want to follow me on Twitter at ericwhitedev, and you may want to follow OpenXML Dev on Twitter. You can find my blog at ericwhite.com.